Salt and bread. There once was a king who had three daughters. The youngest daughter was beautiful and clever and thoughtful, and the king loved her dearly. The two older girls were, I'm afraid, not so clever, not so beautiful, and not so kind. They were, in fact, small-minded and mean. They were also insanely jealous of the youngest daughter. To tell the truth. They hated her and did everything they could to sabotage the king's love for her. They constantly tried to win special favors and privileges from their father. They never missed an opportunity to hint that the youngest girl did not return his affection for her. Their evil envy knew no bounds and would not let them rest. For a long time, the king paid them little attention, but eventually he became upset by the rumors he heard from them. He even became suspicious of the younger princess. Could it be true that she really doesn't care for me? He asked himself sadly. And at last, one day, when all three daughters were gathered around his throne, the king couldn't refrain from putting their love to a test. So he turned to his oldest daughter and asked her to tell him how much she cared for him. I value you, my father, as God in heaven, she replied confidently. Her answer brought a huge smile to the king's face. He then asked the second daughter the same question. "Oh, my dear, dear father, I value you as my own life," she said with a tear in her eye. This answer, of course, greatly flattered the king as well as it would any father. The king then turned to his youngest daughter and, looking forward to her reply with great anticipation, asked her to describe her feelings for him. Oh, my father," she said in her sweet voice, "I value you as salt and bread." The king couldn't believe his ears and sat startled on his throne. The girl's sisters gasped and smiled slyly at each other. The king then lost his temper. His face turned beet red. His body shuddered with rage. "What's that you say?" You care for me no more than the humblest things on a poor man's table," he shouted. The thought that his youngest daughter, on whom he had lavished so much love and affection, cared so little for him, was more than he could bear. He leapt to his feet, shook his fists in the air, and ordered his servants to drive the girl out of his castle. "Get her out of my sight!" he commanded, and stormed from the room. The servants, as is servants want everywhere, did as they were told. They seized the young princess and took her deep into the woods, where they abandoned her to the wilderness. This, as you can imagine, greatly pleased her two older sisters, who finally had what they had always plotted for and coveted. In the woods, the girl was miserable and frightened. She wept when she thought about the home and the father she loved. She had no idea why he had become so furious, why he had banished her from the kingdom. She wandered helplessly around the dark woods until, at last, her fear of being attacked by a wolf or mountain lion got the best of her. Not knowing what else to do, she climbed, cold and hungry, up into a tall tree. It so happened that a young king of another country was just then hunting in the same woods. As he rode along on his powerful black horse, he heard his hounds barking with excitement. He hurried after them and found the dogs surrounding the tree where the young princess was hiding. He looked upward, expecting to find a bear. Instead, he saw the beautiful, tear-stained face of the unhappy girl. Don't be afraid, please. Come down from there," he said in a gentle voice. He jumped from his horse and held out his hand to her. The girl saw immediately that the young king was a person to be trusted. He lifted her down and then put her on his horse behind him, and they rode off to his castle. There, he fed her and warmed her before a log fire. At last, overcome by his kindness. The young princess poured out her mournful story. The king was impressed by her goodness as well as her beauty, 
and fell deeply in love with her. He continued to look after her in his castle and in the end asked her to marry him. The princess, also by now deeply in love, of course accepted his proposal. A date was set for the wedding. Invitations were sent out to all the royalty of the seven neighbouring kingdoms. On the day of the wedding, among the royal guests were the young princess's father and her two older sisters. They did not recognise her. So radiant and happy did she look, and so sure were they that the girl had disappeared forever in the woods. The guests took their seats at the long banquet table, which was piled high with magnificent foods of all kinds, but none of the food was salted, and there was no salt on the table, and there was no bread either. The guests all wondered to themselves why this should be, but out of tact and politeness, no one spoke. But at last, the girl's father could not contain his curiosity, and he was compelled to make a comment. I don't understand, he said, but it seems to me that the two most precious things are missing from this feast. Ah, said the princess, now a queen, whatever can you be speaking of? Why, of course, her father replied, still not realising who she was. I'm talking about salt and bread. Yes, the girl answered. Salt and bread are among the most precious things we know. And once, because I said I valued my father as highly as these things, I was driven out of his house and left in the woods to die. When her father heard these words, he was overcome. He then recognised his daughter and embraced her with a cry of joy, grateful and happy that she was alive and well. He begged her forgiveness for his misunderstanding of her words of affection and for his having behaved so cruelly toward her. As for her sisters, well, their jealousy and plots against their sister were now exposed. It was their turn to be turned out of their father's house. From that day on, no more was ever heard of them. If they were ever rescued from the woods by hunting kings, nobody has ever said a thing about it. Thank you.